Hello, Betty Crow back again, and welcome to uh, the first part of my playthrough of Leisure Suit Larry 3, Passionate Patty in Pursuit of the Pulsating Pectorals. This game was released by Sierra in 1989. The particular copy of the game I'm playing here was gotten off of uh, Good Old Games as part of the Leisure Suit Larry collection, and this version of the game is actually running through Scum VM. Before I continue, I do have to warn that this game does have some nudity, especially in the first part of the game and uh, smattered throughout the game. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, this is EGA graphics, so nothing's really too detailed. Uh, this game picks up pretty much right after Leisure Suit Larry 2. Uh, Larry's on Natunit Island. And after defeating the evil Dr. Nonuki, the islanders finally got control of their island, and they wanted to turn it into sort of a tourist trap. And that's what's going to happen here. It's all going to be described in the intro to the game. And this game actually does have a definitive ending. So I actually encourage everybody to watch this one to the end. This one does have a definitive ending. They actually didn't really want to create any more Leisure Suit Larry games after this one because this one has such a finite ending and it makes uh, Leisure Suit Larry 1, 2, and 3 a, a really good trilogy with a really good story overall. So with all that being said, let's jump into the game. All right, here we are. Le uh, well, the title come up. Uh, before I forget to mention it, there's a lot of text that's going to come up on the screen. And I'm going to try and read it before it disappears because I have no control over that. So here we are, Leisure Suit Larry 3, Passionate Patty, in pursuit of the pulsating pectorals. A little nudge to the crotch there. Since we last saw our intrepid hero, Larry Laffer, cavorting merrily on his newly found true love, on the sands of Natunit Beach, the beautiful island has undergone extensive improvements. Once pristine and primitive, covered by virgin rainforest, splashed by gurgling streams, and washed by tropical rains, Natunit has discovered, and has been discovered, by modern civiliza civilization. Oh, I think one gave me plenty of time to read it. The villagers, eager, eager to shed their Stone Age lifestyle, united themselves by forming Natives Inc trademark to protect their interests and develop their island realizing they were sitting on a yuppie dream a vein of gold they could mine through tourism they took correspondence courses in business management public administration sales and marketing uh, learning modern construction techniques through self-help books and pirated videotapes of this old house they began by building a hotel on this island i guess it said i don't know i didn't read that one fast enough the other ones had plenty of time. Borrowing heavily from foreign investors, they expanded into some very attractive tourist traps. Now it seems to be going faster than I can read it. <laughs> and as soon as I'm going to start with a second, another thought, another dialogue box will pop up and I'll have to read that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this takes place right after Leisure Suit Larry 2. Um, the natives had wanted to develop the island, but the doc evil Dr. Nonuki was stopping them, and Larry saved the island. Uh, there we go. But growth really expo exploded when they discovered the holy grail of modern marketing, the wonder of timeshare. So, like, Larry from the last game is their hero. He should be on top of the world now. Uh, but they're going to knock him down many, many pegs before the game actually gets started. Like, right at the beginning of the game, you'll see. We've got to turn him back into a schlub again. Ah, civilization. Who would want real palm trees when you could, when you never have to prune or water those new plastic models? Welcome to the paradise of the Pacific. The all-new, all-improved, totally yuppified, consumer-orientated Nuntunit Nunt Island. Okay. And that's going to repeat that. Hello, my name is Larry Laffer. Welcome to Leisure Suit Larry 3, Passion Up Hattie in Pursuit of the Pulsating Pectorals. Warning! This game contains some materials that may be deemed offensive by some players. If you are offended by adult situations, vulgar language, ethnic humor, sexual innu innuendo, or pixelated nudity, you'll be happier playing another game or watching another video on YouTube. Yes, there is some pixelated nudity uh, in this game, especially right at the beginning. In fact, especially right at the very beginning. I didn't read that. It said something about watching P PBF if you want to not uh, do this. Now, just like... Um, Leisure Suit Larry 1, it's going to ask questions to try and verify how old you are, but again, that doesn't really work now that the game is 
God damn, I don't remember how old it is. Give me a second. I'm going to look this up. I meant to look up how old the game was before I started. I might have mentioned it in the beginning of the video, but the game was released in April 1989. This game's almost 30 years old at this point, approaching 29 as I'm recording this. But just like the original game, we can skip the questions entirely by hitting Control, Alt, and X. Cheater! Oh well, okay, since it's you, you may go ahead. Pick a filth level from 1 to 5, where 1 is clean and 5 is dirty. Now, in Leaves of Solary 2, there was that kind of uh, clean and filthy meter, and it really didn't do anything. But in this game, I know it does something. I don't know exactly everything it does, but right at the beginning, there's a way you could tell uh, whether or not you're playing the clean or the dirty version of the game. Uh, you are so bright. You got five out of five uh, questions. Therefore, you get to play the game at its totally raunchiest level. And, um, yeah, I guess if you don't answer any of the questions correctly, you still get to play. It's just the, the, the um, lower version. My, how this island has changed. You remember when you parachuted down here, there was nothing but a sleepy little native village inhabited by a tribe of illiterate islanders. Now look at it. It's overgrown with hotels, resorts, casinos, and cheap tourist traps. Woo! <laughs> I knew that was going to disappear. Um... Such is the cost of progress. At least your job as Vice President of Marketing for Natives, Inc. has enabled you to provide a lovely home for you and your beloved wife, Kalelo. Now, notice how, like, this is Larry, like, right off of the second game. I guess there had to have been some years there for that whole island to develop. But he's not wearing a leisure suit. The game doesn't really start until we get our leisure suit. I don't think any more text bubbles are going to pop up. So I'm going to go to the menu and kind of just show off some things. Uh, autosave here. This actually isn't an autosave as you know it. This is just a reminder to save, and I don't want it reminding me every five minutes that I have to save. So I'm going to put it at zero, because I don't really need reminders to save. I guess it's just trying to be more friendly, even though there are still parts in this game where uh, if you miss something, uh, you're going to have to restore the game, especially later in the game. You could get to almost to the very end of the game and then um, not have something you need and uh, have to replay a whole huge section of the game again to get it. Uh, I'll mention that uh, when we get to that point. So let's. Uh, what else do we see here? I am going to actually save the game right now to start here because I think the next thing here is... Okay, yeah, um, you, we went through the autosave. There is, yeah, you know, inventory. We could just hit tab, actually, for inventory instead of Control-I. Um, retype. It says F3, but also spacebar also puts in the last thing. Colors will change the uh, color of the text. The boss key, uh, let's do expletive first. It says son of a bitch. If you watch the Leisure Suit Larry 2 one, there was a trite phrase and um, whatever you typed in there, a lot of people said it. This is the same thing. Uh, son of a bitch. Now I kind of like son of a bitch because it reminds me of uh, the Mystery Science Theater episode of uh, Final Justice. I wanted to put in there maybe Ajka from The Incredible Melting Man. But I really didn't know how to spell that, and I was going to bother looking it up. And, it, and you know, Son of a Bitch is actually funnier in parts of the game. Uh, the reason I saved it, though, is because the boss key. This is what happens when you hit the boss key. And it's like, oh, I'm pretending to work, but I don't know what boss is going to be fooled by this screen. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Um, now, if you want to get out of here, you hit button. Sorry, but from here, but from here, all you can do is restart or restore your save game. So if you hit the boss key, you have to, uh, you're going to lose whatever progress you made. So I'm going to restore where I was here. I think that's about it. Um, speed changing, yeah, we could change. I don't know if this actually changes the... If we hit change, what does it do? Okay. Um, oh, it's just the animation speed. So this has nothing to do with um, the text bubbles. So I can't make the text bubbles that disappear automatically last longer. Um, it's kind of confusing because sometimes the bubbles will just disappear and sometimes you have to hit a button and sometimes it's not entirely clear uh, And then we get volume. So yeah, there we go. Uh, we're at the beginning here. If we look around From here on the lovely Vista Point high up on the slopes of Natuna Volcano The city lies below your feet like a floor of a movie theater after a Saturday matinee a lovely lawn with a bronze plaque lies near to a pair of binoculars. So let's look at this plaque Look at the plaque. And we get two points for looking at the plaque. 
Um, it's kind of hard to read, and you can't really... I, I, if there's a way to scroll up to see Larry's face, I don't know if it's possible. But uh, if that's kind of hard to read, we can say, just we say, read plaque. And I'll say, on this site, our great hero, the great hero of our people, Larry Laffer, single-handedly saved our island from our mortal enemy, the, doc, the evil Dr. Nonuki. Now, if he's such a great hero... It's, it's baffling to me how he'd be such a great hero for this island. What's going to happen to him briefly? And I kind of like how the uh, the credits kind of crawl through as you're um, playing the little bit of the intro of the game. Um, we can't look through the pair of binoculars on the right, but we can look in the pair of binoculars on the, the uh, left. And this is how we tell, this is how we can kind of tell what our filth level is set at. And we have to say look in binoculars here. Okay. Uh, because then we start spying on this woman in this uh, apartment hotel or whatever. And um, she goes by. Turns off the lights. I think we can speed this up just a little bit. And she's uh, lowering the blinds just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then she's going to come back here. And she just removes her top and pants. <laughs> and that's how you know you're playing on the filthiest level. Uh, just to experiment, I did play this on the cleanest level. And what actually happens is uh, she lowers the blinds all the way so you can't see anything. You wipe the sweat from your hands as you remove your eyes from the binoculars. So that's how you can tell what level you're playing at here. So, um, we're kind of still in the prelude of the game. The game really hasn't even started yet. We've got four points out of 4,000. So, um, yeah, here we go. The villagers were wise to retain total financial political control of their island. For example, they've never allowed vehicular tra traffic anywhere. Everyone walks where they go. And some of these jungle screens can be kind of confusing. It's going to, yeah, tell me where to go in a minute here. Up this path lies your home. Your beloved Kalelu is probably there right now something. I didn't get the chance to read that. See, now here's the thing. If I go this way, it's not going to take me to the right spot, but if you go behind a bush, it takes you to a different locale. And um, it just takes a while to get used to that if it's like the first time you're playing the game. Because it confused the hell out of me. So there we are. There's our home. There's Kalelu, who we'd married in the last game. Oh, Kalelu, baby! You shout your level boy, Larry is home! Oh no, you're not, cries a voice from over the fence. You don't live here anymore. I found a new lover and filed for divorce. By island law, all I need to do is walk three times in a circle around our bed. I've done that many times over the past few years. It's still disappearing automatically. You are stunned! You had no idea anything was wrong. What do you mean, divorce? Walk three times? Oh, Kalelu, say it isn't so. It is so, Larry. I'm leaving you and keeping the house. Now please go and leave us alone. Us? What do you mean, us? Are you in our hot tub with someone else? Who? Who is it, Kalelu? I'm with Bobby, my new lover, she responds hurtfully. Bobby is able to meet my needs where you never were. You'll never bore me to sleep again, Larry Laffer. <laughs> Ooh, she's just being utterly cruel here out of nowhere too Kalelu you cry how could you possibly leave me for another man I didn't you fool she replies Bobby's a woman <laughs> can't really tell who's talking uh, poor Larry not only does Kalelu no longer love you she's fallen in love with another woman what could Kalelu possibly see in an Amazonian Harley riding former cannibal lesbian slot machine repair woman? <laughs> she picked a winner there, I guess. And uh, everybody's still talking. Oh, I guess, uh, no. And we can't really do anything else right here. We have to come back a little bit later. Uh, we're going to have to check the mailbox. Can we check the mailbox now? I never really thought about leaving off the screen and checking the mailbox again. Can we open mailbox now? If we tried it before, it's like, uh, good idea, try it later. Oh, yep. Yeah. See, telling me that again right now. So we can't open the mailbox right away. Game really hasn't started proper yet. 
And actually, even when we do get our leisure suitors, it still really isn't. Well, I guess we'll think about it because it still points us in a direction to go that we need to do. Because, you know, we're not totally at rock bottom. We may have lost Kalelu, but at least we have our job. Uh, recovering from Kalelu's shocking news, you carefully consider the alternatives. I suppose I could go into mourning, you think? Mope about all day, sit in my room, run lots of videos and things like that? Or I could give up on women, remain celibate forever. I should, I, I changed it, I didn't really even notice. <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I thinking? No way, not me, not Larry, Larry Laffer. You know, this island is perfect location for a sophisticated single swinger like yours truly. And thanks to the wonderful island tradition, Kalelu's dowry gave me hundreds of acres of potentially valuable forest land. That land isn't worth anything. Perhaps my love for Kalelu blinded me to the potential of my current locale. Where else could I find more women on, than on a tropical resort? And to think of every one of them came here seeking just one thing, a good time. Yeah, that's it, you exclaim out loud. I've had it with monogamy, marriage, long-term relationships, commitment. Uh, Larry moved on his own. I never moved him. So be it. My life's new goal will be to allow as many women as possible to enjoy me while they can. He's so, he's so generous. And the phone booth pops out from the ground. It's, this isn't the time-traveling phone booth from Bill 10 Seconds Adventure. This is like a Superman phone booth where Larry can transform into Larry Laffer. He's back! Larry Laffer has become Leisure Suit Larry once again. Look out, girls. Just when you thought it was safe to dive back into the gene pool, the original swinger is at it again. He's actually not the original swinger. I thought the whole point was that um, he was outdated since he wore a leisure suit, which was popular in the late 70s, but uh, these games are in the 80s, so he's uh, you know a little late with his... Uh, fashion sense. I will go down in front of the bushes a little bit later time, but now we could go back and open this mailbox and get something we need. We don't have anything on us. Yeah, I just needed to verify that. Technically, that's not entirely true. We do have something on us. The game just won't tell us. The thing we have on us is this, and um, this is a printout right here of uh, the instruction manual for the game, which is actually disguised as a, uh, let's see, it says, Nintuna Tonight, your guide to the island. So it's like an island guidebook. And even though the game doesn't say we're carrying it, we are carrying it. And this is really the copy of protection for the game. We're gonna need this quite often in the game. And, um, <laughs> So we are carrying that. It it just it, it'll take a while. once you realize that certain things in the game become a little bit easier. Also, it would uh, it's helpful to read that before playing the game because there's tons of hints on things you could do that you otherwise probably wouldn't have thought about doing otherwise. I'll kind of point those out as we uh, do those. May open mailbox. I, I printed it out. I could have just read the P PDF. But, um, and it's funny if you say look in mailbox, it tells you that you can't look in the mailbox because the lid is closed. Uh, so I get fooled on that. Like, I kept getting fooled on that. I still do that. Um, now we can look in the mailbox. Well, well, look at this. It's an envelope from your credit card company. Uh, take envelope. What's interesting is that if you say look in mailbox, he won't open it automatically. But if you take envelope, he automatically, um... No, maybe once he doesn't take it. Take envelope. Eagler, you take the envelope from the mailbox. Could this be the big break from Ed, Ed McMahon you've been hoping for? Now if we... Uh, yeah, he opens it automatically. I don't... If, say, it's an application from that credit card company whose application you mailed only 15 weeks ago. Ripping open the envelope, you discover your new credit card. And look, it's in your name only. Kalelu can't claim this on community property. So yeah, he opened it automatically since we just took the envelope. We didn't have to open it, but you can't look in the mailbox unless you open the mailbox. It's kind of some weird logic. 
Uh, so, if there's still, we, we still need to hit rock bottom. Oh, right here, if we look around while I'm here, the Native Corporation Native Inc. has done an excellent job of preserving the environment of the jungle, at least in this location. A beautiful specimen Grindilla tree grows here. Now, what it doesn't really say, look on the ground. The bare dirt feels good under your feet. Yeah, it doesn't say that, but we're standing right by a piece of wood. And I don't know how to get to indicate that you can take that piece of wood, but you can take that wood. Okay. I might as well just pick it up since we're right here. You take the beautiful chunk of Grindilla wood from beneath the tree. I wonder if I said look under the tree if it would have given me a different response. I don't know. It's too late now. But we do have this piece of wood. Your Grindilla is hard and black. <laughs> You don't need to see that again. Um, but yeah, we still have yet to hit rock bottom. And I think the game is going to possibly... We I think we need to go this way. If we go this way, the game is now going to tell us to go a different way. There we go. Down this path lies your office. Say, what about that cute little redhead in accounting? You've always wanted a chance to balance her, her figures. I think it tells you, if you dilly-dally, it tells you hurry up, you're going to be late. There we go. It is nearly time to start work. You better hurry, Larry. You're going to be late again. And you know how much Chairman Kenneth hates tardiness. Now, Chairman Kenneth happens was the chief leader. Also happens to be Kalelu's father. So your boss is uh, now is uh, your ex-wife's father. So uh, yeah, this might not end well for Larry here. Um, I wanted to look. I don't know why... You are outside NATO's Inc., home of the island's own major and only corporation. You've always been a big fan of steel buildings. So let's walk on in here, start our, our work day. Good morning, David, you tell the guard. Another day, another dollar, eh? Perhaps so, Larry, Dave replies. But then again, perhaps not. Chairman Kenneth wants, to, you, wants you to report to his office immediately. Okay, David, you respond. But to yourself, you think, don't worry, it's probably nothing. I bet he wants to compliment me on my last big ad campaign. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what it is, Larry. Good morning, Mr. Laffer, Chairman Kenneth growls. It's so nice of you to fit a little time into your busy day and dro to drop by to see us here at Natives, Inc. Please have a seat. He's not acting too chummy, is he? Anywhere but on my couch, he concludes. Nice office, though. Where's he gonna sit? <laughs> Maybe right in the middle of the room? Yep. Whoop! Whoops! <laughs> Perhaps you're wondering why I've summoned you here, Laffer, begins Ken. It has nothing to do with that recent ad campaign of yours, although by its appearance, you didn't have a whole, uh, hell of a lot to do with it yourself. Oops, this isn't going that well, is it, Larry? Since you are no longer married to my daughter and your marketing skills are non-existent, I can't for the life of me think of a reason why I should keep you on here. What about that he's the savior of your island? In fact, I've been wanting for for this moment... In fact, I've been waiting for this moment for, for quite a long time. I know the perfect way to handle this situation. How you hate it when he gets that look in his eye. Perhaps I can introduce you to a favorite hobby of mine. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Son of a bitch, yells Chairman Kenneth. Another 7-10 split. Davy boy, barks Kenneth. Load up my RAM disk. I'm going to take my the laptop out for a spin today. <laughs> really, doesn't really make much sense. Well, well, Larry. Seems your ad campaign wasn't the only thing Chairman Kenneth didn't appreciate. Oh, well, you lived off your wits once. You could do it again. And now we have really started the game proper. You shake the haze from your brain, slowly rise to your feet and stumble groggily outside. And we could go back inside if we wanted to, but there's really no point at all to do that. That was humili humiliating, Larry. You vow never to work for him again. So now the game has officially started here. So I'm gonna just save start. And I'm just going to try and think of what is the best thing to do here. Um, oh, 
yes, of course. A uh, little bit more credits going on here. But uh, we will start out by going straight down here. And there's a woman on the beach, so we'll talk to her. Before we do, hang on a second. There we go. I just wanted to show that these guys, souvenir guys will come out and uh, kind of talk to her and uh, show you that she's really interested in these souvenirs. Souvenirs! Souvenirs! Stop there. Get your genuine Nantunit souvenirs! Oh, wow! exclaims Tawny. Souvenirs! What you selling? she asked the peddler. Genuine plastic souvenirs, handmade in the city of Gruff. -gruff, 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 -gruff. Now she's going to stare. What was that? asked the girl. She's totally topless, but we never see her turn around. Hong Kong, the vendor, vendor mumbles beneath, under his breath. Ah, no matter. As long as they're genuine, give me several. You'll never know when I might get back this way, and I just love buying souvenirs. Blair is getting a good look, though. All together, that comes to the peddler pauses, considers... Considering what the market will bear, $300 American, and I'll cover the taxes for you. Really? That expensive? Well, okay, if you say so. Hey, have a nice day, says the vendor. Have a nice day. Oh, sorry, he says, hey, thanks a lot, says the vendor. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, now we could talk to, let's look at the lady here. <laughs> Hello, you say to the beautiful young girl on the towel. My name is Larry, Larry Laffer. Hello, Larry, replies the blonde. My name is Tawny. And he's all of a sudden getting a view from a different angle. Wow, she even looks better vertical. I bet she has great horizontal hold. Oh, that leisure suit Larry humor. Look at Tawny. What a gorgeous woman. Obviously nothing hot to hide. You suddenly forget about Kalelu completely. You could learn to enjoy the single life once again. Are we going to get a different angle here? Maybe if we... Yeah, we have to talk to Tawny. Before you speak, you look her into the eye. Uh, you look her straight into her eyes. Let's uh, talk to the lady. What if we look at her again? Just curious. Her magnificent blonde hair haunts you. Too bad there's no one home within it. <laughs> okay, let's uh, talk to Tony. Um, what would it take for you to date an um, uh, older man like me? Larry, I guess I'm just a material girl. Okay, she's, he's just going to repeat again. She's going to repeat again. But here's the funny thing is we already have what she wants. We have this credit card. How will you ever use this credit card when you when everyone on the island knows that you personally and also knows you personally and also knows that you have current access of uh, current assets of Zipola? So that's our you know we that's like telling us we can't use this credit card. So we could give her this worthless credit card. And she here, Tawny. You say I see how you enjoy shopping. I'd like you to have my credit card. Oh, Larry! Cries Tawny. It's the perfect gift. The right size, the right shape, and the right color, gold. And I think I know the perfect way to express my appreciation to you, too. Come here, big boy. This game is wasting no time getting it on with the ladies. <laughs> right now, like, we're not even, like, 25 minutes into the game. Bam! Tawny! Okay, well, um, they're having a good time there. Oh, souvenir guy's coming. Souvenirs. Souvenirs. Get your genuine non-tunit souvenirs. Oh, wow, exclaims Tawny. Souvenirs. E easily distracted, huh? Uh, what you selling, Tawny? yells at the peddler. The peddler smiles. I have some fine Ginsu knives. Excuse me for a moment, will you, Tawny asks you. Something else has popped up. <laughs> Something else, she says. Well, you think to yourself, that was rude. <laughs> and Larry's just going to lay there and wait. So what do you think, lady, says the vendor. Wouldn't you like one of these fine Ginsu knives to take home for a souvenir? For you, I'd like I'd uh, make a special deal. Oh, says Tawny. Is it really a bargain? I just love bargains. I like how he's throwing that knife up there. Most assuredly so, says the peddler. It's handmade with hand-rubbed hickory handle 
uh, and blade of finest Sheffield carbonized steel drawn from the hottest 100 year old oak fi uh, charcoal fires honed to perfection by small oriental virgins and guaranteed for life or until you leave the beach whichever comes first I always have trouble with that um, I'll take it says Tawny does it come in a carrying case no says the peddler but I bet you could thinks the peddler uh, that'll be $30, he concludes. Oh, let me see, replies Tawny, digging into her bikini bottoms. Oh, gosh, I've only got 20 bucks left in cash. But wait, I do have this shiny new credit card. Turning to you, she says, Hey, hold this knife for me, will you? Thanks ever so much, madam, says the native, sliding his imprinter over your former credit card. It's a, a pleasure doing business with a real pro. Turning back to you, Tawny says, I'm sorry to interrupt this, my little shopper whopper, but you know, I just can't resist the purchase. And now, where were we? And she just continues. <laughs> uh, you pause to compliment, uh, contemplate her rude behavior. Were you too offended by your thoughtless interruption to continue making love to the beautiful young Tawny? Nope. Well, she gave us a knife, and she never is going to ask us for our back. So we, this is how we wind up with a knife. Oh, shoot. You know what I forgot to mention? Uh, if we had looked at the sand, uh, we would have seen that there was crabs crawling around the sand. Um, and I forgot to do that, but um, so that's, that's going to be important here right now. Suddenly, you become aware of the hundreds of tiny sand crabs that have been crawling inside your leisure suit pants since you first lay down on the sand. Yeah, oh, you scream, quick, get off of me! And now one of the funniest moments in the game, or possibly even the series, is my love making that good for you, my little middle-aged mall man, says Tawny? <laughs> oh, one of the, this is just great. Son of a bitch, you cry. Tawny, I've got a terrible case of crabs. <laughs> he digs in and grabs one out. Crab shouts, Tawny. I should have known better than to have do, than to have anything to do with a local, especially an older local, and a pudgy older local at that. <laughs> As you pull a large crab from your pants, Tawny says, Like man, I refuse to party with any guys so socially irresponsible. Get lost, Flesido Domingo. Placido Domingo, I should have said. Tawny, baby, you cried. Does this mean we're through? There is no response. <laughs> yeah, I meant to look at the sand. I wonder if we can look at the sand now. How interesting hundreds of tiny sand crabs are running all about the sand of the beautiful Sunafad Beach. And that's going to be the end of this first part of Leisure Suit Larry 3. It looks like it didn't really work out with Larry and Tawny, but... I have a feeling we're not quite done with Tawny yet. We'll have to stay tuned for part two to see what becomes of that. Also, there's a whole lot of the game we haven't seen yet, and I haven't really explored a whole lot of it. So there is quite a lot more stuff to look at in the future. See you then.